Our first question is from RTW Girl. Should certain people avoid hit or is it a good workout for all people? I love Absolutely. this question. Yeah. I love this question. Okay, so HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. And I remember when the studies came out. I know you guys did too because yep. this was a big deal in fitness where they showed that short HIT workouts were at least as effective but often more effective mm -hmm. for burning body fat and preserving muscle than steady state cardio. Yeah. And I remember when that came out, every trainer was oh, doing hit. It was all the latest rave. Like everybody was jumping in on the hit bandwagon yes. right after that study. And now the reason why it's more effective is because hit is more like resistance training than steady state cardio is. Steady state cardio is definitely very cardio like. Hit is like doing, you know how we say doing like tons of circuits with weights is doing cardio with weights? Mm -hmm. Hit is like doing weights with cardio, it's explosive. It's more strength build. It's not exactly like lifting weights, but it's much more like lifting weights or doing resistance training. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's going to preserve more muscle. Therefore, it's going to be very effective <clears throat> at pure fat loss. Now, here's the problem with it. And this was the issue that I had is when I saw all these trainers doing it, there's there's a lot of people this is completely inappropriate. Oh, yeah. Most. I mean, and that was everywhere. I mean, that was the first thing that I saw was like, oh, my God, I'd, I would never take uh, certain clients through, you know, a workout like that because they just don't have the joint integrity. They don't have uh, the ability to, um, it, you, know, you know, properly stabilize and, and to, to get through these type of explosive moves. Well, when, you, when you're training a client and you talk about uh, stability, strength, I mean, explosive uh, performance is at the, the pinnacle. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what you, most clients that you get or that we would train were deconditioned, out of shape, poor mechanics. I mean, if they were ever to do hit, it wouldn't be for a very long time. They don't, it doesn't belong in any programming. In fact, if, if you're an OG listener, you have probably heard us talk about this a little bit. We haven't talked about it in a long time. But um, I remember when we first hired our marketing team, and they wanted us to to write this, and we didn't. We didn't write a hit program till way later mm -hmm. in the business because we. And, and by the way, the reason why they want to is because they have the tools, right? We have the tools to be able to look up what people are searching the most, and we knew that it would be more profitable for us to uh, release it. In fact, when we finally did release it, it was one of the biggest program launches we ever had, and it is the only program of all of our programs that comes with a warning mm -hmm. uh, and that you we don't you, we don't think you should do this for long term and it is not for most people and that was that just speaks to like the integrity of of the business is that when we first started this we we're like listen we know that there is a place for this stuff we do know that it has value mm -hmm. but we also know that the majority of people shouldn't be using it and most certainly shouldn't be using it for l long term which is what I also saw so after all those studies and stuff that came out to support the benefits of HIT when we were in, our, in the early 2000s when we were all trainers, the the next thing I saw was that's how everybody started oh. to train all the time. It's every single infomercial. It was every single app in the app store was based off of like HIT training. Mm -hmm. and it just drove me crazy because nobody was emphasizing all of the prerequisite stuff that you, know, you needed to build up your body in order to be able to withstand and handle that kind of stress. Yeah, one of the characteristics of HIT is that there's short periods of going all out so th and, and you see people do this on treadmills on bikes on rowers and then of course even worse they'll do this with weights and equipment and jumping on things but even if you do something as simple as a bike and you go max exertion and you're not somebody that works out consistently you've never done this before the risk of injury goes through the roof mm -hmm. but he, it, it's even deeper than that even if you don't hurt yourself if you're a high stress individual with borderline hormone issues, you don't get good sleep, you got kids, you have a mortgage, you got a hard job, and then you're and you're doing resistance training, which is good, but that's also adding a stress. And then on top of that, your cardio is hit, and you're gonna go do add hit on top of that. It's probably not gonna benefit you. In fact, I've taken clients who are in this category where they just overdo everything, they don't get good sleep, there's type A type individuals. I look at their workouts and like, oh yeah, I do hit five days a week and because I know that's good. And I took them and said, no more hit. You're going to do steady state. But I thought steady state was not as effective. No, no, no. We're going to do steady state because your body needs some more recuperative type workouts. And then lo and behold, they burn more body fat and they feel better. And that's this is like the, the key to exercise. It needs to be appropriate for your body. Mm -hmm. If it's not appropriate for your body and your lifestyle, I don't care how awesome the workout is on paper or how great it's supported by studies. 
If it's not right for you, you're not going to get there any faster. You're not going to progress any better. And if anything, you'll get there slower and maybe even set yourself back a yeah, little bit. Yeah, even – and another thing to consider too is that like as you ramp up like uh, you know one of those variables like intensity – you have to also be able to counter that with, uh, you know, more emphasis too on the recovery. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I do think that we did well uh, in terms of like alternating that with our flow sessions and really emphasizing the fact that we're going to need to maintain, uh, you know, the the joints uh, health through this process of really like hammering it. So uh, you don't find that in a lot of hit programs at all. It's just all just the hit, and then you, you come back and you just you, you, you do beat it on yourself again. We should we should always we should probably have a, a little bit more clarity here or bring some more context for the, the listener who doesn't want to know what HIT is because there's two things. You guys are also talking about cardio and resistance training. Right? right. So you can use HIT in both ways, right? So you can do the high-intensity interval training with cardio modalities, and then you could also do it with resistance right. training. Essentially, it's short bouts of maximal exertion interrupted by bouts of minimal uh, exertion. So mm -hmm. it's like, it, 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 I, to give you an example, it would be like you're on a bike, and you're riding at low intensity, and then every 45 seconds, you do 15 seconds of all-out sprinting. Yeah, on as the hard bike. as you can. Right, yeah. yeah. And then you back all the way off, let the heart rate recover, and then go. And the, what the benefits that all the research and studies show, it's the, the calorie expenditure that you're getting from the massive spike and then the heart trying to recover to come back down right. to its resting heart rate. Right. And be, because of that the body has to burn a ton of calories to do that. So that's where a lot of the, the positive benefits come from. Now, I, I like using it, and I used it quite a bit with clients for cardio, and I'd use it obviously later on when they're ready for some of that because there's a little less risk with cardio than there is with weight training. Like So where I have the biggest you know, bone to pick with it is when you see trainers using it with you know jump boxes and speed ladders and yeah. you know and then they're doing squats right after that and I mean that that's where I have a problem with it because you see all this dysfunction in the client I mean their form looks and they're literally just trying to exhaust this person and burn as much calories as possible doing these dangerous exercises and even if it's not dangerous like they're going to get hurt like maybe they have they have enough uh, control to not get hurt. I rarely ever see anybody do it with great form. Mm -hmm. So you see this kind of like circuit based type of training. And it's really these trainers that are either one are, are short on time or just trying to burn a ton of calories. And I have more of an issue yeah. with that than I do with yeah, the cardio. To be, to be clear, doing it with resistance training can be far more effective. Yes. It just requires better programming. Yeah, There's more things, more, ver I mean, our HIT program is HIT with resistance training, not in cardio. But we carefully programmed it and planned it out so that you reap the benefits and minimize the, the potential. Well, and one of those determiners was when your form breaks down, you stop, right? Yes. And so that was something that we tried to emphasize as much as possible is that, you know, we are trying to get through the, this time of, uh, you know, like, like cutting out the rest and we're trying to get through these exercises, but uh, we're, we're not trying to degrade, um, you know, the performance of each one of those exercises. We stop if, if that's the case. So the way I would, I used it for cardio was like this, and this is, I did this the entire time that I was competing is I talked about this many times that um, I did hardly any cardio when I was getting ready for a show. So I would do any sort of movement was exercise, like training, resistance training, or walking uh, for 90% of, of my training. Now, when I got to the last couple weeks uh, was when I would start to introduce cardio. HIT was actually the first piece of cardio that I'd introduce. So I would actually do that post-workout three days a week. I would do 12 to 15 minutes of HIT afterwards. So I'd do my weight training session, get on the elliptical, Stairmaster, treadmill, whatever, and I'd do these these 12 to 15-minute bouts. The, the logic and theory behind it for me as a competitor at that time was – uh, I, I don't want, I, I want it. The last thing I want to do is add more time to the gym. I'm already training seven days a week right. and an, an hour, hour and a half inside the gym. So I don't want to start introducing a half hour, hour of this, this, this cardio, these cardio routines. I want to just up my, my calorie ex expenditure uh, with the shortest amount of time and doing that with hit post workout was the strategy on it. It wasn't until you know, I got even closer, which is like the final week when I would start to do these, you know, 45 minute to hour long bouts of cardio. I wanted to avoid doing long bouts of cardio for as long as I could because I knew that that would also sacrifice the most muscle that way. You, your body would start to adapt after. That's why you do this for such a short period. Yes. Yeah, it's a very smart application. Look, to be very clear, 30 minutes of walking 
is not nearly as stressful in the body as 10 minutes of high intensity interval training on a treadmill, literally. So three times as long of walking is not going to hammer your body like three, like one third of the time, but done with sprints, with interval type of sprints. So when you're trying to train yourself to also facilitate recovery and which that's how I like to use cardio with a lot of people is I'm, they're already pushing themselves to resistance training, especially if they're beginners or intermediate. I'm not going to throw more crazy stress on top of them with sprints. I'm going to say, go for walks, a uh, 30 minute walk. You're still moving. It's good for you, but it's also not damaging and not stressful in the body. In fact, oftentimes it's the opposite of stressful. It's actually more rejuvenating. So just to paint the picture, like hit, even though it's shorter, can definitely place a major stress on the body more so than steady state cardio. Of course, unless you get into the extreme states of steady state where you're walking for you know three hours a day. <laughs>